So despite what the title may be, you've clicked it, maybe you're looking for the greatest workout tips, some nice weight training or beard growing tips, it's nothing to do with that. This is a video about toxic masculinity. Oh, I know what you're thinking, oh boy, here comes Baron with another edgy little rant. I know, but bear with me. You've all heard of toxic masculinity, right? Well, if not, Oxford Dictionary defines toxic masculinity as harmful beliefs about the way men should behave. I don't know why I wore glasses for that. I wear glasses normally anyway. Don't let the beard fool you. I'm not really a man. Like, don't like football. I don't really drink. Um, I'm not afraid to cry. As far as the paper terms go, I'm not really a man. <laughs> Except for where it counts. <laughs> but trying to be too masculine can hurt people. It can hurt people around you and it can hurt your mental health quite a lot. I've never been a manly man. I've never been like a tough guy or into the stereotypical stuff men should. Like I said before, I don't really like football, not really into cars or fighting or violence. Boobs are pretty great though, right? That's a universal fact. Sometimes I was made to feel like a wimp because I didn't like the same thing some other men did or what they should like. Never been into football. You get picked on by that a lot by other guys, especially when they're all football lads. And you'd get called stuff like a wimp or even you get called gay because you don't like manly stuff, which isn't cool in the first place, but anyway. But what's wrong with being a wimp? Or what's wrong with being gay for that matter? Like not liking any of these typical manly stuff doesn't make you any weaker than anyone else. It doesn't make you strong because you like football. It means you can sit there for 90 minutes and get bored out of your brain, but... I found a list of common traits found with toxic masculinity. So we're gonna quickly run through the list. A lot of them, I think, double up, but we'll go into them in detail anyway. So three of them I think kind of go together in the same sort of category is mental and physical toughness, stoicism or not displaying emotion, which I'm glad they put the second bit in because I don't know what stoicism would be otherwise, and emotional insensitivity. Now, men are from a young age taught not to cry. You know the phrase man up or being told as a kid to stop crying specifically for boys and men because it's being seen as being effeminate or not manly to cry. Now, I'm engaged to a real woman. Sorry, ladies. And you know, sure as hell, on my wedding day, when I see my future bride walk down the aisle, I'm gonna cry. In front of all of my friends, all of my loved ones, all of my family. Am I gonna feel bad about it? Maybe a little bit, but mostly, I won't care. It doesn't matter if people see me cry. It's not gonna change their opinion of me. And if it does, their opinion doesn't matter to me. And it shouldn't matter to you either. If you're a man and you're seen to cry, what's wrong with that? It's an emotion. Why should you feel bad because your face testicles are leaking water. It's not your fault, it's just what your body does. You don't control your emotions, you shouldn't have to control your emotions. If you feel sad and you cry, fine, everyone does. If you feel super happy and you cry, that's also cool. I've cried watching anime, TV shows, films, even at the happy parts, not necessarily the sad parts. It doesn't happen all the time, it doesn't happen that often. My face isn't permanently damp, but when it does happen, it's totally fine, it doesn't matter. I don't try and hide it and try and be all manly and toughen it up. It just happened, deal with it. I think emotionally insensitive comes back to the same mental strength sort of thing. If you're not emotionally sensitive to other people, you're gonna alienate them, you're gonna upset them, you're gonna drive them away. What's wrong with being sensitive to other people around you? If I see that someone's having a tough time, I'm gonna be sensitive towards their needs. I'm not gonna go in and take the piss of them because they're struggling or they're upset, whatever. Help people. A family motto we've stuck to, which I've heard elsewhere since, but I always grew up knowing it as a kid, is treat others as you'd like to be treated yourself. If I'm going through a tough time, the last thing I want is people to can constantly take the piss of me and push me around. So I'm just going to be nice to people. Be sensitive to everyone, emotionally, physically. How do you be physically sensitive? I don't know, doesn't matter. The next point of this list is aggression, which comes into violence as well. I'm not a particularly aggressive or violent person. Video games is different. I can be as aggressive and violent as I want in video games. Not to the people, but to the NPCs. What are they going to do? Nothing. That's what. But I'm sure as hell not really aggressive except aggressively handsome. There is a sort of stigma against men, but they're all aggressive and violent and love a good fight. I don't think that's the case. No one I can think of in my circles of friends would run in and start a fight for no reason. It's just not what anyone civilized does. Like UFC is obviously different. That's just men getting up their pent up aggression. I still don't approve of it. It's not my cup of tea, but fine, do your thing. But. Most people I know aren't particularly violent, they're not going to suddenly get in a fight for no reason or just generally be aggressive, even when drunk, really. Not so much. Now, another point on the list. No. Now, the next one on the list is heterosexism or being overtly anti-gay, really. Um, I think that's something that we have less of nowadays. 
but it definitely used to happen more before LGBTQ plus really became a thing. Like I said before about being called wimp and gay, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but you see a lot of macho men who will do everything they can do to try and prove how straight they are and how, oh, they couldn't possibly be gay. Just seeing another man gets them angry in their pants. I think a lot of what you used to have in the streets like wolf whistling women down or catcalling women in the street and being overtly sexual towards women when you're with all your guy friends. I think part of that is because you want to try and seem like you're the most macho, strong, straight man in the room, which I don't think is the case. There is nothing wrong with being gay. So why are you trying to prove that you're not? I think the best example of this is the joke where you say no homo to any of your friends before doing something that might be perceived as gay. Why is that an issue? If you're sat there and you hug your friend and you instantly think, oh, he might think this is gay, no homo, you're the one with the problems, not anyone else. Deal with them first. But I do think that heterosexism is probably quite a big problem with toxic masculinity. And that is one that 100% affects other people and definitely needs to stop. It doesn't benefit you in any way. Why do it? Stop. The only one on this list I kind of get is self-sufficiency. And that's where you believe that everything needs to be on your own shoulders. You don't need help from anyone. You're gonna do everything yourself because you're a big strong man who don't need no woman for nothing. I don't get it to that extent, but you see all these old TV programs or films where the man is refusing help from his woman or even refusing help from other friends because you think it's weakness to need help. Everyone needs help. I can't go around my house and suddenly start changing all the plug sockets or fixing all of the taps, going in doing all the plumbing. I'm not trained for that. I need help for it. I'm not necessarily trained to have the best emotional support in the world. That's why I have people who do. Everyone needs help from other people for, for various things. And I think one of the best things for the world is to actively help other people. Like if anyone here is struggling with mental health or struggling with any sort of issues in that sense, reach out to somebody. Everybody needs help. I don't think it's a case of keep it all to yourself and try and deal with it yourself. Men, women, everything in between. If you are struggling with anything, ask for help from someone you think can help you. If you don't think someone can help you, ask them. They might know someone who can or suggest a, a website, suggest a phone number, whatever. Everyone needs help. In this day and age where there's so much suicide prevention going around, talking to someone is one of the best things. That's not being self-sufficient, but there's nothing wrong with relying on other people for some support. If you're not going to be a burden, talk to people, please. But all of these points, as long as you avoid most of them and you learn from something here, you can be the strongest man. Toxic masculinity is not strength, it's Chad behavior. And no one likes a Chad. Sorry, Chad. Are you a real man? The kind of type who's happy to be open with his emotions and can talk to people around him and ask for help every now and again? Or are you one of these honky-tonk bullshit people who thinks physical strength is the only thing that matters? If you're a woman and you've seen these toxic masculinity things going around and you've seen it in other people, let me know down below. Have you noticed any of these in people around you you didn't realize before? It's just interesting. I find this sort of thing hilarious, but that's partly because, like I said, I've never been a man, so I've not really struggled with these so much. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to go do about 100 push-ups just to prove how strong I am. But until next time, see ya.